Next up to present is Sensidose and CEO Jack Spira. Welcome, Jack, and please go ahead. Thank you very much, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Sensidose to you. So Sensidose is a mixture of a drug delivery company and a medtech company. The company presently has a product on the market. It contains micro tablets of levodopa carbidopa for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Uh, the product is on the market and what it does is that it minimizes uh, the symptoms that the patients will have. It's an individualized dosing, which is our keywords, individual, individualized dosing and fine-tuned dosing for the disease. Our technology is covered by strong and broad patents and um, it relates to both the dosing procedure and actually the format of our tablets. FlexLev is reimbursed in the countries where we are on sale, Sweden, Norway and Denmark, and we are moving forward to other countries. We have some key partners, which is the, our production partner in Germany, Desitin GmbH, our production company for the device, SMD, here in Stockholm, and then our IP partner, which is Potter & Clarkson, and our CRO for regulatory pharmacist. The team is myself, the CFO, Christopher Svensson, and Maria Wikström is the head of RA, especially for the device. Um, in order to understand what we are doing, I want to explain a little bit to you about Parkinson's disease and then come back to our product and then I'll come back to the company. So Parkinson's disease is a lifelong disease. Once you get it, uh, you will have it a number of years depending on the age when you get it. So, it can be from 15 years to 30, 40 years. In the beginning, it's called the honeymoon period. You have a very little symptoms in the so-called early stage, and you manage quite well, and you can basically treat with all of the approved treatments. They are all okay. Then it becomes more complicated. The effects weans off of the doses you give and you have to start to do combination treatment, which gets very complicated and multi-pharmaceuticals. And in the end, when you had the disease for quite some time, you are confined to a wheelchair and it's a qu quite severe disease. In order to understand what we are doing, I have to be a bit complicated, so we're now going into some details. One of the most important parts of uh, treatment with the levodopa in Parkinson's disease is what's called the therapeutic window. And this is illustrated here by this gray field here. That's the therapeutic window. So when you are inside the therapeutic window, your treatment with levodopa is quite easy. So in the beginning of the disease, in the honeymoon period, as you can see when you give a standard drug, you are inside the therapeutic window and you are doing quite well. However, as time goes on, and this can be after three, four, or five, six years, with each dose you come outside of the therapeutic window. You see it both, both on the upper side and on the lower side. And then you get side effects from the treatment. So when you get above here, then you have involuntary movements. And when you are below, you cannot move at all. So what we are providing is a way to handle this treatment by making sure that you are always inside by giving the dose more often but in a smaller amount. So we can adapt this amount to each of the patients as it's very individual what the patient's requirements are. So by doing this, we can treat the patients uh, in all stages of the disease. Our present product, which we have on the market, it's called the Flexilev with the dosing device MyFid. It is targeted towards late stage patients and as you can see, they have very much difficulties in using standard tablets while we can adapt the treatment very well for them. But we are also developing a new, a new device. It's the same tablets, but a new dispensing device, which has the working name Orafid which is targeted towards uh, earlier patients. And uh, the main reason here is that it will be cheaper for, for everybody to use. So it will be a simpler device, easier to use, and targeted towards a larger part of the patients. And this one is in development now, 
but as I said, it's the same tablets. So this is what we are offering to the market, a good way to treat patients using uh, the, our Flexilev tablets. So the present device we have, this is how it looks. Here you can see the actual device. It has, it's actually like a smartphone. So it, it will alarm and tell you when you should have your drug and it will deliver from the bottom here our micro tablets containing levodopa and carbidopa. And it's pre-programmed by the healthcare provider. It can be a doctor or a nurse. And so at every occasion you can have the exact number of tablets which you need. If you need seven tablets, you will get that. If you need 18 tablets, you will get that. So it's very simple to use for the user. Uh, it also has some niceties in that it tracks everything you have done. You can go back and check. You can also ask, uh, you, can, you can put in the questions like how do you feel and, and what type of symptoms you have. So you can register symptoms as well. But the main part is that it's an inbuilt, inbuilt alarm together with the tablets. So our future complementing product, the Orafid, uh, for safety or, or confidential reason, I cannot show you how it looks. Uh, so you will have a question mark, uh, but we have some clear idea of what it's going to look like. So it will be um, a non-digital device. It will be an old-fashioned analog device. It will re not require any sort of training for neither patients or healthcare users. It will be totally intuitive how to use it. So it's targeted towards earlier patients, as I said. It will be smaller, discreet, very accurate, of course, and extremely easy to use. And for the reminding point here, how to remind the patients of taking their dose, it's going to have an, a standard one of uh, an app, which is on the smartphone, which will remind the patients of now it's time for a dose. So the development is ongoing, and this is something we hope to be ready within this year. So in order to put the highlights of Sensidos in one slide, so we have our product already launched here. As I said, we are marketed in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. We are approved in further eight countries in Europe, but we are not selling yet in those countries. And we have the established production of our both the tablets and the, the uh, device in itself. We are completely unique for the moment. We are the only one who can offer this type of treatment in uh, Europe, or actually in the whole world. And uh, our medication, our tablets are extremely reliable in, in the sense that you really get what, what you ask for. So it, it's really precise in the five milligram steps which we give. The new device is targeting another patient group, so we are not stopping to sell our present device. This new one is targeted to earlier patients, which are estimated to be able to reach about 80% of the um, uh, Parkinson population. One should keep in mind that Parkinson is a long-term disease, so it's usually long-term treatment, even if the patients really want to try out new and, and, and other treatments over the years. Uh, in our plans for the coming years, we are looking at a geographical expansion of the present product, and that's initially to Poland and Finland, and from then on to other parts of Europe. The new product, we are primarily targeting Europe. We feel very safe in what we are doing in Europe, and this is sort of a large enough bite for us for the moment. Uh, this is a very, and it's a very attractive financial prospect um, for this type of treatment, uh, provided that we can deliver our product and the new product according to our targets. So our target is to sell for 200 million Swedish crowns within five years post-launch for the new product, and complementing the old one, I should say. And this is covered by a strong patent portfolio, which. I will not dwell into right now, it's always too complicated. We don't have any payments or any third party rights or no royalties, everything goes to the company. Uh, we do have a board, right? And here is the board. The chairman of the board is Per Nilsson, he is well known in the startup community in Sweden. Uh, Lars 
Tehnert is an um, engineer, also well known, comes from Uppsala, has been involved in several successful companies. Sten Magnus Aquilonius, he is the founder, uh, professor in uh, neurology in Uppsala, founder of this, and also founder of uh, the product Duodopa, which is a well-known treatment in, in this field, and I will come back to it. And then it's myself. I uh, didn't uh, talk about myself. I'm an uh, MD, PhD from Karolinska. Have been in the pharmaceutical industry for many, many years. Too many years, maybe. We are very differentiated from um, from uh, what we our competitors in this field. So we have a unique treatment concept, uh, the idea of an individualized dosing together with a dosing device. We are the only one who can provide. Our treatment, in, in spite of that it has uh, you know, requirements on the patients, patients are required to take their drugs several times per day, as you saw in this curve. So, but it has an extremely high compliance. Our patients will take around 60, sorry, they will take up to eight doses per day, we know that they will take 90% of the doses, so very high compliance. You can optimize each dose, both in terms of the amount and time, which is really important for these patients. Our clinical trials, which I am not going into, has shown a very robust bioavailability. So whenever you take your dose, even if it's morning or afternoon or in the evening, you will get the same bioavailability from our tablets. Uh, it has a very rapid onset. You see the effect in around 20 minutes. And uh, we always stress that the frequent dosing is one of the keys for, for our treatment. So it requires really that the patients are compliant. It's very important to understand the cost, because cost is a key of key importance in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, third party payer, the state or you know, insurance companies pay for the drug. So, if we look at the, the treatment for a severe patient who goes into the advanced stage, the sort of Rolls-Royce treatment is the Duodopa treatment at a cost around 46,000 euros per year. And that was actually invented by Sten Magnus Aquilonius and his co-workers. And then there are some other treatments uh, which we'll not go into, but we, our cost per year is 3,000 uh, euros per year. So from a cost comparison, the offer we give to the, both the society and patient is you know, quite different. You can save a lot of money on, on trying us before going into one of the advanced treatment. And furthermore, you don't need any operation. You don't need uh, uh, any surgery or anything when you do the MyFID Flexileb treatment. That, uh, that is needed for all the other advanced treatments, some sort of uh, invasive treatment into the body. So, very nice competitive edge when it comes to price. Uh, a question that always come, comes up, are we as good as the Wodopa? I would say no, we're not. But we are good enough, good enough. And that's in comparison to price and convenience for the patients, this good enough is uh, uh, more than enough for the majority of the patients. Now, if you go to the pure generics, and I have taken a patient's example here, the cost per year is around 500 euros, and our target for the new product is around 1.4 or, or 1,400 um, euros per year. And the reason for that is that we think that we can offer a better treatment, and we will be able to show that we are actually better than the standard treatment, so we can demand a somewhat higher price, but still cheaper than our present price. And by this, we think we can have a nice, nice part of our market. So this is a very important uh, you know, way forward for us to understand the pricing in the European pharmaceutical market. So this is our sales and projected results. We, we are going to be cash flow positive at 2024 or late 2023, the red bars here, sorry. It takes money to develop uh, the new product. And we are also increasing our efforts on the present product with the sales force and also 
you know, expansion into other geographical areas. So that is what comes first, geographical expansion. Then we're going to launch the ORAFID in Scandinavia, followed by launch of ORAFID in Northern Europe, and as the third wave, the launch in southern part of Europe. So increasing the sales, and in the end, we will have sales of around, well, above 250 million. This is our projected result. And in order to do this, we need really to also uh, strengthen the organization. That's really important to be able to reach this goal. We are covered by patents. The, most, the two most important patents here is the, uh, sorry, is this one, the compacted powder. That protects the format of the tablets the way they actually look. And the other one is the dispensing device here. And together these two protect us from that. Nobody else can make tablets with the same format. And if you put, uh, and if you make another format, they're not gonna work in our device. So together these two give us a nice protection. So to finish up our short-term objectives and way forward, is number one, we're going to increase our present market share. We want to give more patients the opportunity to use our treatment, especially in Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, where we are now. The opportunity for a really fine tune and make the best out of this type of treatment, as good as you can get. Then we want to do the geographical expansion in parallel here. So Finland and Poland, and maybe we'll do Netherlands in the same move. We also want to complete the development of the ORAFID and achieve the CE marking for that. That's on the table for this year. And in parallel, we want to start to identify who we are going to work with for the commercialization of both MyFID and ORAFID in, in our expansion into, as you saw, the three-step expansion we are planning. And in order to do this, we need to strengthen the organization so we can deliver according to this plan. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for presenting. Um, I would like to ask you how you would describe the competitive landscape within Parkinson's disease. Yeah, it's actually very, very competitive, especially on the generics. There are several players and several drugs available for patients to try, and there is new treatments coming up or in, in, in process for coming up. I always say that no matter what, you should always work, you know, having in the back of your mind that the competitors are always around the corner and always, you know, work as fast and as good, as thorough as you can because there, there are and there will always be competitors. For our specific niche, there are very, very few competitors, but that doesn't stop, you know, other, other type of treatments from, from coming. So. One should be aware of competitors always. Uh, and finally, Parkinson's is your, your main focus, but do you see potential in other indications as well? Yes, there are other neurological diseases which have the, basically the same need for an individualized treatment. And we do see uh, you know, very nice opportunities. However, we are a small company, <laughs> a few people, and we say, let's concentrate on Parkinson, let's make this successful and then we will move into our next uh, indication. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much.